Welcome to Non-Pharmaceutical Interventions 101, a training sponsored by the Western Wisconsin Public Health Readiness Consortium. Non-Pharmaceutical Interventions, or NPI, is one of the pri primary target capabilities for public health in budget period five. NPIs are the ability to recommend to the applicable lead agency and implement, if applicable, strategies for disease, injury, and exposure control. Some of the key strategies outlined for NPIs are the ability to isolate and or quarantine, to place restrictions on movement and travel through advisories or warnings, different social distancing strategies, external decontamination when warranted, proper hygiene and incident-specific hygiene, and other precautionary protective behaviors. The CDC defines four key functions for public health to be able to accomplish during an event in which NPIs are warranted. Function one, the ability to engage partners and identify factors that impact non-pharmaceutical interventions. This is largely a preparedness function. Much of it takes place prior to a response. Function two, determining the non-pharmaceutical interventions to be used. Function three, implementing those interventions. And function four, monitoring those interventions and adjusting as necessary. So what is public health's role? Largely, public health's role is to monitor the guidance that exists for when and where to implement MPIs. Often this comes from our state health department through the CDC and at times the World Health Organization. Make recommendations based on the guidance, communicate those recommendations and guidance to partners. Sometimes you're in a primary role to implement those non-pharmaceutical interventions. Oftentimes you are again in a guidance role. Monitor the implementation and adjust as necessary. It is important to note that public health may be a primary or a secondary player in NPIs. One of the most current examples of non-pharmaceutical interventions is the Zika outbreak. CDC published current guidance for pregnant women to avoid certain areas of Florida where Zika is hitting hard. This is a classic example of a travel advisory or a travel restriction to a certain specific subset of the population that the disease happens to be targeting. So this is a very current example of a non-pharmaceutical intervention. Function one considerations. One of the things that public health needs to look at is what are the legal implications or other barriers authorities need to implement MPI. This is where local corp council becomes your, your best friend. Other key partners in this consideration are Wisconsin Department of Health Services, the CDC, and WHO. What key partners then might be needed, for example, the faith community when we are doing certain social distancing activities as limiting the common communion cup um, or removing handshakes, um, if that is tradition during certain outbreaks, to limit the spread of disease. Function two considerations is when these events occur, who really are the subject matter experts? Where does the guidance come from? If incident command is activated, can it be a unified approach whenever possible and keep those subject matter experts such as court counsel in the loop? There are many tasks associated with function three. Task one is the ability to activate the NPIs in coordination with appropriate partners, for example, through schools, through law enforcement, through your hospital and healthcare partners if needed. Task two is assisting in providing support services, whether they be public health, medical, or mental behavioral health. A good example of this is in the case that we need to isolate individuals. If we need to isolate them, that's an example of a non pharmaceutical intervention, but we also need to provide the resources and support that those individuals need in order to keep them isolated through the suggested time period. Task three, monitoring for the need to close congregate locations, whether it be malls or schools. Again, that's an example of social distancing. Task four, monitoring for the need to restrict movement. This is largely taken care of at the state or federal level. 
as local public health, we would simply be communicating those recommendations to our partners. Task five, monitoring for the need for external decontamination, whether it be chemical exposure, uh, radiation exposure. This is largely an environmental health function or first responder function, but as public health, we may be part of that communication loop. And task six is based on whatever the NPIs that are suggested, we need to educate and inform the public so they can make proactive decisions on their own. Function four considerations are assessing the degree of transmission, contamination, infection, and severity of exposure. Again, pulling in those subject matter experts through surveillance and investigation. Disseminating situational awareness through an incident action plan or an ICS 201, which is nothing more than a situation briefing, to let all agencies involved know where the NPI is at, what's the status of it, and if any adaptations need to be implemented. Revising recommendations for NPIs based on the briefings that you get, including recommending intervention escalation or de-escalation. So as the NPIs are implemented, you're monitoring for how they're doing. Should we remain as is? Should we escalate? Should we de-escalate? When the NPIs are no longer implemented, do you have the ability to document the NPIs, the actions taken by local jurisdictions and feedback from community partners? This is often done through the after action report process. There are five general strategies related to non-pharmaceutical interventions. Think of these as five separate buckets and there's specific tools within each bucket. First off is isolation quarantine. It's an example of an NPI. As local public health, you have very thorough, updated, and current isolation and quarantine as part of your FEP. Movement restrictions, often through CDC guidance. Social distancing restrictions, again through CDC guidance. External decontamination, depending on the type of decontamination, there usually is very specific protocol for this. And again, public health isn't a primary player in this. They would be part of the information sharing loop. Hygiene, whether it be common hygiene practices or incident-specific practices, public health may be the conduit of this information to your partners. The key for public health is understanding where this guidance lays within your plans and understanding your role within that guidance. Part of Budget Period 5 deliverables to Western Wisconsin Public Health Readiness Consortium member agencies is the development of an NPI playbook. You can see a snapshot of it on your screen. Once completed, this tool will become a part of your FEP should you choose to localize it and will meet the contract deliverable as identified in your grant contract. We're also working on an NPI section of the FEP, which is currently in development. Um, check the members section of our website often. As well, try to encourage your local planners to attend our planning parties. Lastly, we have created a YouTube channel specific to and dedicated to our member agencies. Once you go to YouTube, simply search for WWPHRC training and you will be directed to our page. Capability specific trainings as well as other public health preparedness related trainings will be posted here often. 